everybody, it's Everyday Nerdy, and today we'll be working on the part of the finger that connects the palm. So, first you gotta do a sketch. This part can be done in many ways. You don't exactly gotta follow how I did it, because it's basically, we're gonna make a square for this part right here. I don't know if you can see it. And then we're gonna create a hollow entry space for the hinge that'll be inside that can allow the finger to move left and right. Like all these fingers, they move left and right. So you can do a construct for when you do sketches. I prefer to do that because then you can adjust the construct plane where you want it to be. You don't have to do that. You can just do it right there on the face. So somewhere in there, I think I accidentally, accidentally deleted or I did, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, I projected the planes. So I projected the plane of the square so I could do an outline and then reduce the offset outline so I can do the extrusion that cuts in here so I can move the finger back and forth for the hinge. So that's that. And once that, once the cut is done for the finger part that moves back and forth like this, you, I created, um, from the original hinge from the previous video, I added it onto the sketch for the rectangle for the part that goes inside there, which would be the hinge that goes back and forth. And from there you extrude that. And then once that is done, you, um, the next step, once that is done, you can pull onto the created faces cause it will be a new face that's separate. Cause every time I do something, I do new body because it's paranoia. So you do a new body and you, you pull it, or I think it's pull cause it's already there. So yeah, you pull it. And then on that new face where it's like the indent that's inside the hinge is where you can now do the spear of the hinge. That's going to be similar to the previous video, except instead of moving up and down like this, we're going to doing it left and right. I'll probably do some circling somewhere up there. So this makes sense. I only do one side because at the end, it's just going to be a mirror at the end. So what's on the top is going to be the same as on the bottom. And once that's done, you can join and combine all the bodies. You can do it at the very end. Uh, so that's actually a mistake that I, that I shouldn't have done. I shouldn't have done combine now I think about that. Because you'll see later on how that's going to bite me in the butt. But I have that fixed later on in the video. How I shouldn't have combined the face that I pulled. But either way, you do another construct plane on the new face that's pulled. And you're going to do the spear. This is the spear that's going to be the joint that's going to move it like this. So I also made another mistake with this one that matches the previous one is once you do an offset of the spear and I do the one fourth rule for where I draw the line and this line isn't even straight when I draw it. So that line should be touching, should be including the offset when I use the cutaway. So when you revolve the spear, the spear will just be the inner circle. But then when you do the cut, so you can do the clearance of it, it should include the offset of the spear. And then the line should be going up to the offset, not past it. So, I mean, technically it depends on the printer, but even with these small clearances I did, my thumbs really hurt after pushing all the joints together because they're meant to be snap on joints. So here <laughs> I'm mirroring, I'm mirroring it. You can see the mirror doesn't come out, doesn't match it. You see how the pulled face, you don't see it on the bottom. You only see the spear because the pull face isn't considered a separate body and I mirrored features only. So I'm trying to figure out like what I did wrong and then I do some funky stuff and it comes out worse. I realize I have to delete that combining feature. And I have to go back and then redo the, the mirroring. And it just, you know, it takes a while to figure out all the bodies. That's it. So, but yeah, never too late to fix something. And then you do the redo the mirroring and you, know, you just got to second guess yourself a couple times and then voila, brand new. You can even see the clearance is so tight on those circles that maybe you guys should do like bigger clearance. I don't know. It was kind of fuzzy with the clearances, but, and then even the clearance for the hinge now looking back is pretty tight. 
usually it's like between 0.1 to 0.05 sometimes. Sometimes a 0.2, but a lot of it depends on how it gets printed. So, and then, oh yeah, fillets so you can get that nice, you can keep it square. And the one thing I forgot to add in this, oh, I did add it. So you got to do chamfer. I just select the face and I chamfer all the edges for the outer the outer part of the hand because that's how I like the robot hands to look. And then there's some still stuff that I didn't like how some of the stuff happened. But you can see how here it looks. So I'm going to edit. Oh, it's my dog. So I'm going to... Do, 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 do. Wee-oo, wee-oo, wee-oo. Wee-oo, wee-oo, wee-oo. I've been watching a lot of Adventure Time. Yeah, so... Some of this stuff is just me tweaking it over and over because, I don't know, I just second guess it. And then when I tweak it sometimes, wild things happen. Because, yeah, but then I have to go back and change it. But either way, I hope you liked this video. Stay tuned for the next one. See y'all guys.